In my previous video, I showed the first experiment results of my coil capacitor. I mentioned that a faster impulse showed no current implosion. So I made a faster coil that gives faster higher voltage impulses. In this video, I continue my research with this faster higher voltage impulse that had a little surprise for me. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Ivo and I'm doing research into Nikola Tesla's radiant energy, which is related to impulse electricity. Let's start with the experiment. I am using the solid state Tesla oscillator circuit, which is an advanced radiant energy power circuit that I used before in April 2019. After the experiment, I will give a short insight in what happened. What I've got here is my new three sets of coils for my new coil capacitor. The difference this time is that my L1 coil is smaller. This is the L1 coil. As you can see, the windings are not fully to the center of the phi ratio. And this makes it have less inductance due to the less windings and also less capacitance, which makes the resonant frequency of this, of this L1 coil a lot higher. And that results in a faster impulse. And I want to test this and compare this with and without epoxy. So this is the setup of the three coils. And I'm first going to test it without epoxy. Then I'm going to cast it in epoxy and let it harden for a few days. And then test again and see the differences. Now first I'm going to hook it up. So right now I've got all the coils hooked up. L3 and L2 have the same capacity. Uh, L2 is series resonant, L3 is parallel resonant. I've got the series MOSFET switch here. Two MOSFETs, the series producing or able to switch 3000 volts at least. I've got the DC offset module here that is also capable of 3000 volts DC offset generation. And I'll now turn it on, tune it, and we'll take a look at the results of the coil capacitor without epoxy. So the L2 coil is 15 millimeters distance from the L3 coil, and we don't use epoxy, but we use air. So the capacitance is around three times smaller than with epoxy. Okay, I've got the system running now and tuned to 73.4 kilocycles per second. And the power I'm putting in is 20 volts at 1.06 amps. Let's take a look at the oscilloscope. Here's the scope. As you can see in orange the L3 voltage and in yellow the L2 voltage are out of phase 180 degrees. This is at LMD resonance and the impulse is generating around uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is 1200 volts uh, impulses and the current of L2 in green is being imploded. I'm now going to zoom in to the signal and take a look at the duration of the impulse. It's very fast right now. So now we can see the impulse has a duration of 275 nanoseconds delta T between the cursors. So that's a pretty rapid impulse. Let's go back to the overview. I'm now going to change the scale of L2 to 500 volts per division and I'm going to push up the voltage to see how high we can get with the power and the impulses. So each block is uh, 500 volts so we need two divisions for a 
thousand volts. So now we've got 750. This is around 2000 volts impulses and two and a half thousand. Ah, my current is limited. Okay, I'll open up the current. And we're at one, two and a half, maybe almost 3000 volts impulses. And I'm at uh, two times 23 volts at 2.58 amps. And going up even more. Yeah, this is that is the current limiting again. Oh, bang! <laughs> I hope you heard that. <laughs> I just had an explosion of a capacitor. So the energy is, uh, the capacitor bank is still energized. I've got 2.2 uh, kilovolts on the coil and the capacitor bank, so I won't touch it. Here is also still the DC voltage on, so I really have to be careful. This is slowly discharging right now. I'm going to discharge the system now. I always use uh, these uh, resistors to discharge the cap. And it will take some time, so I'll pause. Okay, I discharged the capacitors. I can now disconnect this safely here. There's no more DC on the capacitors. I'll turn that fan off. So, what you can see here, I hope you can see that, is that this capacitor is exploded. This uh, capacitor is rated for 2000 volts DC and 700 volts AC and uh, well it exploded it died it was the only one the rest is still intact so yeah I went way over the capacity uh, of this capacitor tuning bank so I was worried about this for a while because these switches also are only rated for um, let's see 125 volts AC <laughs> so they are really pushed to the limits uh, but they hold up very well but the capacitors won't and uh, that was to be expected it's a little bit sad that I didn't check the L3 current because that was the point which I wanted to show but okay we'll continue testing that is all part of doing research sometimes these things blow up the faster impulse turned out to also implode the current of the series resonant l2 coil but only at the lower negative impulse voltages beneath minus 2900 volts once the voltage of the impulses was more than 2900 volts it didn't implode the L2 current anymore and this is very important it seems that at a certain voltage the voltage impulse energy is transformed into something else and I strongly believe this impulse energy is used to displace the dielectric field between L2 and L3. In other words, with high enough negative voltage, the impulse is strong and fast enough to set the volume of ether between the L2 and L3 coils, which are capacitor plates, into a longitudinal motion. And this moving charge is what represents the rapid change of current in L3. So by charge, I mean the electrified volume of ether between L2 and L3, the dielectric field. 
And this longitudinal movement of the volume of ether is a longitudinal displacement current. This isn't easy. So to explain this more clearly, I will make another video which explains what current and voltage impulses are, as this is needed to understand how this displacement current is working. So the faster impulses gave me a higher voltage, which was needed to start the longitudinal displacement current. We indeed need the discharge of a capacitor and we also indeed need high voltage for this to work, as so many people have told me in the video comments. But it was a bit different than just discharging a capacitor with a spark gap. Actually, we don't even need a spark. The experiment was stopped with a loud bang, but it already gave us very good information. I now know the displacement current starts around negative 2900 volt impulses and a DC offset of positive 2500 volts. Sadly, I could not show you the current amplification of L3 this time, but luckily I already showed this in my previous video. Although my capacitors can handle this high frequency AC pretty good, as it is resonant energy, be warned, do not overcharge your capacitors over the DC limit. They can explode, as I've showed you. All this information is part of my open source research and can be used freely by anyone. No patents can or will be applied. If you want to fund my research, you can do so by leaving a donation on my PayPal account, which is listed below. Please share this video with others and leave a like. It really helps out the video distribution. Remember to subscribe and hit that like button. Hit the notification bell for an update on my new video. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I will explain what current and voltage impulses are so we can understand the displacement current they can set up. See you next time.